Hey there folks, Cozzy here, drafting for pick one, pack one. And yeah, let's get straight into things. I've been having a pretty cranky time late <laughs> with my drafts, they haven't been going too well. I took a couple of spare ones after finishing off um, the Jex Bounty and the Draft 102 video. And oh man, they smashed me. So, hopefully we have a little bit more fortune this time. Um... Because, yeah, as my wife Jinxie would say, I've had my cranky pants on and it hasn't been fun. Uh, Ephemeral Wisp, not a fan. Horse Snatcher Bat, great at the top, very expensive. Only Quartermaster can create a really fun engine to build around. And then otherwise, we're looking at the Giraffe's Frostkin or the Lightning Strike. Uh, I really enjoy playing with the Quartermaster. Perhaps with the mood I've been in, I should just play a deck I enjoy. I think Horse Snatcher Bat is very good but it's susceptible to torch but it does close out games if your opponent can't deal with it but if we can get into a Rakano or into a stone scar deck that works with weapons i think i'll have a lot more fun and be a lot more pleasant to be around so whilst it's not necessarily the most um spiky of reasons uh, i think it's probably the most appropriate one for this video series uh warband chieftain's amazing if we do happen to get into those colors and a torch being third pick keeps me optimistic um we have an interesting choice here between the valkyrie and the ranger the ranger allows me to stay on my stone sky plan valkyrie is a phenomenal card for Arcano, but it forces me over to different color that loses the chieftain so the ranger is still very close to an equally powered pick and so I'm quite happy to take it there. Field Captain is stronger, but I think we're going to start to look to commit. Uh, Slumbering Stone or Combust? That's an interesting choice. I, I'm growing to love the Slumbering Stone. It took me a while to, to learn of its virtues. It's definitely like olives. It's an acquired taste that takes a while to pick up on the subtleties. But it's just a one drop who sits there and stops an attack. And once it dies, it trades out. If we see another Combust come around, it gets great, which is exactly the kind of things we want to do here. Add the Slumbering Stone and also the Soul Collector to our team. Welcome, guys. Um, Diefang Spider is more defensive than I want to be. Ticking Grenadine is slightly underpowered, so I think we'll throw in the Pyro Adept. And at the moment, this is filling out pretty nicely. We don't quite have the weapons that I was hoping for off the Quartermaster, but it's not bad. That helps a lot. I'm really happy to see an Obsidian Golem and these colors coming through so late. Whoa! Sharpshooter! Last pick! Jeez! Okay, so my colors are open. I'm really sitting in the right seat and jeez, now I've got an arduous decision. Cabal Countess is a very powerful card. Only Quartermaster could allow me to basically guarantee that I get an engine running. Only Ronan Lathrae Ranger. All things that I want to be doing. Man, that's that's a choice. So what are how are we currently looking? Have we did we draft anything off color? No, we literally every single card that came to us was on color. Uh rally's the most dubious out of this. Everything else I'm pretty happy to run. Wow, what a first pack. Hmm. Cabal Countess can blow people out on a good trade. It's a 4-1 for 3, but I think it's actually better in Constructed than it is in Limited. It can, the, the 1 health just trades out for a lot, and it does cost 7 to turn into 6-1 Quick Draw. Only Ronan is a fantastic 1-drop, and I, I'm actually half thinking about the Ranger. Hey. Really am half thinking about the Ranger. Oh, sorry about that. That's my mobile going off. Um, how does this play out? If I'm if this gets ultra aggressive, which is what this is wanting to do, then the Ronin allows me to get off to fantastic starts, as does the Ranger. The Quartermaster creates more of an engine, but I haven't seen any weapons come through yet. You know what? Let's just um, let's just quickly check. how other people see such things. Um, I realize that this is, these are designed for first picks, but like 
this isn't a bad spot to be. It feels as though I'm at the candy store and people have um, given me some money and basically go buy whatever you want and I just can't quite make up my mind of what what it is that whatever I want actually entails. Uh, let's try and get this working. Okay, so... And I'm also aware that this is getting ever more out of date, this particular list. Uh, so only row they have is A-. minus. Quartermaster is a B plus. I can respect that. They don't actually have counters on the list. I totally disagree with the Lothrari Ranger being a B minus just quietly. I rate it just as high, if not higher, than the Ronin. Uh, the other one I want to just check out. There was another guy who shared their list on the Reddit. forum the other day. We'll see whether it actually comes in or not. It's just taking a while for me here. And I actually quite respect their opinions. Um, most of what they've done have been quite similar to where I'll be listing things. So they have the Cabal Countess as a B plus. That sounds fair to me. Otherwise I want to look up the Oni Ronin. A minus also sounds very fair. Quartermaster is a B minus. It's a B plus, yeah. Really interesting series of choices. I better remember to switch this over. Ah, uh, let's go all in. We want to get aggressive. Hopefully, we'll have some fun with this. Ooh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Argent Port Instigator is ludicrously well priced. It's a 2 cost 3 3. Life Drinker is a very useful weapon. Runic Revolver is a useful weapon. Ravenous Thorn Beast is a powerful creature. And we already have Grenadine drones here. We also have an Obsidian Golem and a Warband Chieftain, all of which won't care too much about being eaten by the Thorn Beast. Yeah, wow. I feel as though um, this has just been an embarrassment of riches. Like, I think most lists would have all of these as very solid B pluses. If I knew that I had more sacrifice effects, I'd be interested in the Slapping Stone. Argent Port Instigators are rare, so I'm just not going to see it any other time. And if we're attacking and forcing off trades, it works well with our aggressive plan. And a 2 cost 3 3. Or a 3 cost 5 5 that could eat our stone. Let's take the Instigator. I think that's the way to go. Okay, so now we want to work out just how aggressive we want to get. A Vulture could do some reasonable work here, or a Magus is a little bit slow. But again, if we manage to get a couple of. um sack effects then it can be a very neat combat trick I think we just want to hit a crit critical mass of two drops really sharpshooter is amazing uh, devour or fixing well we were talking about how much we want to find a couple of sack effects so I think the devour is a good pick for us right now Wow, this is insane. So would we rather an Amethyst Monument, a Dark Return, or Fixing? I don't think I need the Fixing. It looks as though I'm just going to get fed ludicrously into my colours. From what we've seen so far. Dark Return turns my Sharpshooters on. Can bring back these Infiltrate guys. Amethyst Monument helps with uh, basically instances where I've been power flooded. I see these as very close in power level.
Flooding will hurt a lot with this build. Okay, we'll try and mitigate that a little bit. Uh, this could well be... Wow, that's a late Karmic Guardian, but we're not remotely in the colours. But that's a late heavy... I mean, sorry, not a late heavy axe, rather. What I was trying to say is this is the kind of deck that could desire a heavy axe. Jeez. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so um, this is what happens when you happen to be on a highway and you're the only car going through a beautiful four-lane highway that's been built for thousands of people. Um, we have one Dark Return already. We don't have a Xen and Destroy, which is a great creature. Um, and we are a little short on the threes currently. The Quartermaster could be very underpowered if we don't get more weapons. And the Devour works well. The thing about Dark Returns is they definitely have Diminishing Returns. Um, I didn't even mean for that to be a pun then. Um, once you get three or four, you start to run the risk of having two of them in your hand and no creatures to turn back. But I think two is fine for the time being. A rampage is nice, especially if we get extra rangers. And hey, look at that. Um, perfect, perfect fixing right on where we need to be. Um, I had a moment when that was the first card I saw that I was like, eh, we could maybe give it a shot, but then we saw the Annihilate. And that stopped all of the thought process right there. Uh, treachery? Isn't super fun. Uh, this is the kind of tempo deck that could benefit from it. But I don't think that's the way I want to be going. Um, so I think my real choice is between the Stranger and the Magus. Sorry, I just get rid of that. I'm noticing that the Shining's distracting me. We already have one Devour. We don't have any Ravenous Thorn Beasts. And we, are, we have a lot of just really good twos already. Uh, actually, a little bit weak, but I don't think the Stranger will... Although it also allows me to think about splashing into Primal. I feel as though I'm happy enough having a Magus in the deck, though. Uh, wow. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sounding like a broken record, but... Just all this good stuff. Just coming through again and again. Um, the real interesting choice here... Ameth Amethyst Acolyte works as a strong tempo play here, or the Thorn Beast fits into having a lot of creatures that want to be sacrificed. And I think that's the reason why I'll take the Thorn Beast here. I'll take a Desperado. Yeah, that's fine by me. And now we have a choice between a Blood Beetle or a Permafrost to consider splashing. Look, we already have a lot of very powerful creatures here. If we have the opportunity to uh, splash a Permafrost as well, that's when this deck's just going to be busted. Is this low enough curve that we want to be playing a Heavy Axe? I can't see this being the kind of deck that I want to play a Dark Wisp. I can't see this being the kind of deck that I play a Scheme. So we'll take it just as the only one that's a plausible. Uh, we're definitely never going to be playing three Heavy Axes. It makes me a little bit sad for not taking something else that was a more viable choice. We'll get rid of it. And so now we have a choice as to whether we would rather an extra Gorilla Fighter or a Magma Javelin. Uh, Javelin is a piece of removal. Fighter isn't. Um, and Javelin can fit in with the Quartermaster. Yeah, I think I'm happy enough to see the Janin. And there comes a very late Destroyer and another reason for us to contemplate splashing into Shadow. Was that a Quartermaster we've seen every single time? Um, this is a really interesting choice. Uh, the Charchain Flail is a hyper-aggressive relic weapon that's very effective. Um, Beast Caller's Amulet, if we have evasive units or if we can control the table, um, it's just ludicrous value. The Blackguard Sidearm, I think, is just amazing on everything. And the Ornate Katana is also good. So how does this game look like playing out? We have, what, two one-drops. And then a couple of twos. We're actually a little bit shorter on twos than I thought we were. But all of them can attack in pretty effectively. Only one's got amazing evasion. 
Yeah, so everything's stuck on the ground at the moment. Huh. Char chain is just straight up removal, which could be an argument in its favour. But I think this has the highest upside if I can pull it off. And I just don't use it if that's the case. Yeah, let's go for it. Jito, I don't think we have enough one drops. Combust, combust, combust. What am I talking about? It is a good card. As is Flame Blast. Executes just straight up removal on the condition of it being exhausted. I think I like the Flame Blast best because it can also be a form of reach. Uh, that's good. We'd like the extra solid 2-drop. And yeah, wow, Burnout is precisely what we'd like. And then finally the Smuggler's Stash has come through. I just need to make sure i got enough creatures uh, to have the deck work without it. So i got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, okay, so we got enough. So sweet, the Smuggler's Stash will be an amazing top end for us. And now I have a choice. Ah, oh, you know what's disgusting? Um, I can put... Where is it? I've got an Argent Instigator that I can put the Beast Call Amulet on. So if something of theirs dies, they're in trouble. Uh, I don't think we need the second Rampage. we got a, a couple of, you know, just um, mess around spells anyway. But I think the Blood Beetle's the kind of thing I would like in this deck. Assembly line, we have quite a few sack effects, especially if one or two more come through. Wow, that's a very nice combat trick that can just finish off the game. We get them down low enough. Uh, I suspect that we didn't get enough fixing to run the permafrost or the feeding time and the overall quality of our cards is pretty solid anyway a little bit of a shame they would have been some pretty solid toys to have the opportunity to play with uh, so in this kind of deck when we're running what a top of five I'm probably wanting 18 power so let's just do what are we currently we're looking currently looking 50 50 and we have a monument already so do we have a uh, other piece of fixing as well we did we had a stone sky banner there so it looks like we have our colors well accounted for that much is for sure 16, 18, so we'll stay with that currently. Both of those will stay. They fit the plan very well. Uh, Flame Blast is triple fire, so we need to keep that in mind. But it looks as though we're going to have a little bit more red than black anyway. I'm happy having the Blood Beetle if we want to go hyper-aggressive, but I guess we want to work out what Sabotage can go. Torch is fine. Devour is good for one... Uh, Pirate Depth is probably one of the weakest of my two. Scavenging Vulture, I think, can stay by virtue of having the Beast Caller's Amulet. Desperado's good. Quartermaster. So we get two weapons from the Golem. We currently have two Heavy Axes, but I'll be happy to lose them. We have a Magma Javelin. We don't really have a lot to make the Quartermaster amazing, so it's really just an underpowered 2-2. Now we have the Thorn Beast, Shooter, Destroyers, they're great. Burnout is great. Centaur Rider is not. Cloud of Ash is conditional, but we'll leave it in for the time being. I actually think one of the weaker cards there is the Magus. Um, Cloud of Ash, I think we'd rather just win out on the board. And then I definitely wouldn't want two heavy axes. In fact, I don't think I'm aggressive enough to really want any. It's not as though we have um, a whole bunch of flyers or things like that, which also makes me think the Quartermaster isn't great. If we're only running two fives, 
we have 16, 17, 18 power. We do have a fair few fours, so I don't want to cut down to 17. So we just need to find four cuts for the rest of the deck. As far as cheap creatures, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can probably afford to lose one two drop. And uh, maybe we don't need a pair of assembly lines. Whilst we do have a fair few sack effects, we don't really have um, a pump spell for all of them. So now we're just wanting to lose two more cards. I love almost all of my threes. The fours are good. Solid fives. I do want to keep one Rampage, just um, to have an opportunity to turn some of these Infiltrate cards on. Surprise my opponent in that regard. Two Dark Returns seems good, especially when I have a pair of Sharpshooters as well as a Destroyer. And also all of these Infiltrate units. The removal seems good. Maybe we can ditch a Granadin Drone whilst I do have a couple of sack effects. I don't have quite that many to justify it. And I could see an argument just for um, running 46 cards here. We are running slightly higher on the power than normal. Soul Collector's good. She just gets out of hand. The only thing I could consider cutting here would be another assembly line. But we only have 16 units out of 45. So I feel like I don't super want to take the risk and it works so well with Devour, works so well with Burnout. I actually think, yeah, I think I'm happy to run 46 and 18. I don't want to run 45 and 17, that's for sure. That feels too low. As far as the balance, we're now a little bit heavier on Shadow. We have 9 sources of Shadow. We have 10 sources, rather, of Shadow and 9 sources of Fire. 9 has me a little bit nervous for Flame Blast, but we have so many cheap Shadow cards that I don't want to go on less than 10. Alrighty, let's lock it in and see how this um, Stone Scar deck deck goes. Hopefully it'll treat me better than my last few. My last few have been um, pretty wretched attempts indeed. Anyway folks, I've been Cosy Drafting for Pick 1 Pack 1. I look forward to when you guys join me, and uh, hopefully we burn the faces off our opponents and I can get a bit of aggrotherapy and let it out on the cards. Alrighty folks, have a good one.